In a previous video from May 2016, I showed what looked like a meal moth that I found in my house. I continued finding these moths in my house all summer because they're breeding in a composting container in the basement that my housemate unfortunately maintains. I oppose composting in general because it breeds tons of invertebrates that live short lives and may suffer painful deaths. The fact that compost bins can also breed insects who escape into the house is a further argument against them. These meal moths aren't a nuisance to me, but I feel sorry for them and try to avoid injuring them. Sadly, they will soon die, maybe of starvation or old age, like this moth on the bathroom counter did recently. The footage in this video is from 10 August 2016, in my house near Albany, New York, USA. One room contained about a dozen of these moths, with three pairs of them engaged in mating. This page explains regarding moth mating that, quote, when the female is ready to mate, she releases airborne chemicals called pheromones from a gland close to her abdomen. The male receives them through his antenna, according to the Encyclopedia Smithsonian website. The pheromones have an odor that informs male moths that the female is ready. After the female attracts the male with her pheromones, the male attaches to the female and fertilizes the eggs internally. Some species of moths mate after a dance or a rigorous battle, while others are docile maters." End quote. This source reports that female meal moths may lay 200 to 400 eggs. Since my compost bin is covered over, it's not clear that these meal moths that escaped from the bin will find food to lay their eggs near. If they can't find food, the eggs may hatch and starve soon thereafter. If they can find food, then the moth population will keep increasing until eventually when food supplies are too low, moth larvae will starve in even greater numbers. This Malthusian situation is a cruel fact about nature. Right after I filmed one pair of moths mating, I found that they had disconnected their abdomens. I'm unsure whether they finished mating on their own or whether I disturbed them. It seems clear to me that whatever pleasure or preference satisfaction these moths may experience from mating is outweighed by the suffering of their offspring, most of whom may starve to death shortly after birth. I wondered whether I should disrupt the mating of the other two couples but I assumed that they'd probably reunite soon afterward, in which case I would only have succeeded in causing them some distress. Anyway, rather than focusing on whether a given pair of moths mates, the long-term solution is to avoid composting in the first place. Instead, I recommend generating fewer food scraps and disposing of food scraps that you do have either in a sink garbage disposal unit or in tightly sealed containers in the trash into which insects can't enter.